he did an album called I Want to Play For You. And then Bob James had an album called Head. Patrice Russian sang Forget Me Not. And that's just touching the tip of the iceberg of Gerald McCauley's new book, which I have in my hand. It's called Down the Roads. Now, if you can imagine that someone could actually compile a list of talent that's been around for the last 60 years, blowing your mind, Ray Manzarek from the doors, all the way up through current people like D'Angelo. What were you thinking? My man, Gerald McCauley. But before you answer that question, look to your right and look to greatness. Yes. It's Mark Giordino, Good my co-host. Can I finish? No. My co-host, all around great guy and filmmaker extraordinaire. What were you thinking about when you put this fantastic book together? It started as a film. It was a documentary and uh, it wasn't my idea. Uh, my partner there, Benjamin Beauvais. Benjamin, Benjamin's not here, so as far as I'm concerned, it is your idea. He had nothing to do with he it had if he's nothing not here. To do with it. He had nothing to do and with it. And Benjamin, this. if you're out there, I got one, one tip for you. Show up. Yeah, take a walk, Benjamin. Chump. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Well, um, uh, he, he's an avid uh, Rhodes collector, vintage keyboard collector, and he mm -hmm. restores them, builds them from the ground up, and he really can play, I mean, really get down. And uh, Terry Dexter was the catalyst. She uh, and Ben were doing a session together, and um, he started explaining his passion for Rhodes, and he wanted to do maybe a documentary about it. So she said, oh, you have to call my brother. You have to call Gerald. He knows all these people and this and that. And so it really started from there. She's a networker. Yes. yes she doesn't yes. mind putting it out there. No. Which I appreciate because most people can't sell themselves. Yeah. And they can't sell what they do. Oh, it's, it, it was interesting because uh, when, when she called me, I was one afternoon, I was just at home. And she said, oh, my friend is going to call you about a, it's some great piano. I you don't sound know just like called, her, too. I said, okay. I said, sure, no problem. And, and, and eventually uh, uh, Ben, you know, did call. And uh, we got together. And, and uh, I, I just uh, appreciated it, just his, uh, how uh, he was aficionado and just really knowledgeable about. Where's the, the movie? The movie comes with the book. So that's the DVD we got in the back of the book. Yes. And they made a documentary about it, and then they decided to go forward with a book. Now, this is not a cheap enterprise. No. Because when you decide to do a book like this, you got to put some money together just for the printing. And this is a hardcover copy with a gloss cover and King James uh, stock on the inside, gloss. That's amazing. That's an expensive book. Who backed the project? Well, uh, again, as we started out said about doing uh, interviews, uh, I was at uh, a talk show, a uh, Tavis Smiley show, uh, and I was on the A and R side of mm -hmm. one of George Benson's projects, and he right. was on the show. So, dun, dun, dun. Oh, sorry, okay. and uh, I think George Benson. You scared me there. I didn't sorry. know what was happening. At the it was, I was doing George Benson. Oh, all right. I knew sorry. you were doing something. Sorry. And and so uh, Tavis Smiley, George had mentioned that uh, that we were working on the project and he said that he did the interview. He was very he's very gracious like that. He likes to promote people as well and, and talk them up and and uh, Tavis used the phrase he said, You should immortalize the subject matter. That's what he said to me. It's easy for him to suggest that he wasn't paying for it. Well, I'd never been involved in the book process or anything else. It's and expensive, it, timely, and nerve-wracking. Yeah, well, I, I thought about it and I said, wow, I, I don't know anything about books, so I left there just with that seed. Yeah. And uh, maybe this was in uh, perhaps uh, early, mid-2009, I think it was. Right. And, and so later, um, uh, I went to see Christian McBride uh, at uh, Catalina Bar and Grill in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and I was invited down to that. 
And George Duke, by the way, uh, the great George Duke, was our very first interview. And uh, that night... George Duke of Sweet Baby fame. Oh, well, yeah. And he did a lot of road stuff early oh, on, Oh, of too. course he did, yeah. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I told Ben that I, I predicted George would be the first to answer the call. He's just that kind of guy. So you just... Wait, wait, wait. So you just put a call out and people began responding to what you're doing. Yeah. I want to hear about that process when we come back. But you're telling me your sister's Terry Rhodes. I mean, Terry Dexter. Yeah, my, my, she's my place. She's, no, yeah. she's not your real sister. Oh, oh, yeah. Good, then I can tell this story. She came to this show with a guy named Chioki Damachi. And we were taking a picture. And I felt something going in my pocket, right? And I looked at, I looked at Terry and I said, excuse me, uh, that's not my pocket. And she says, what are you talking about? That's not my hand. And I look at Chioki. Strange. <laughs> I thought so too. We'll be right back.